What is weather compensation? In this video, I'm gonna try and explain what weather compensation is, how we use it, and why we use it. So, in your domestic home, traditionally, you will be used to using what's known as a thermostat, which we call an on-off thermostat. It could well be a mechanical type or a digital type. So mechanical types traditionally look something like that, with a dial on the front, all your numbers running round in Celsius with a marker of where you're setting your thermostat. You could well have a digital one that will have a screen on the front with the temperature that you've selected on it and a plus and a minus button. Essentially, they're doing the same job. You're choosing a temperature that you want your home. What those devices do is when the temperature drops below the set point you've asked for, they send a signal to your heating appliance to ask for heat. It's a call for heat. So if you've selected 21 degrees, when the room temperature drops below that, it'll call for heat from your appliance. Your appliance will turn on and start putting heat into your home, normally at the 100% output of that appliance, okay? So you'll have your home, you'll have your gas boiler, and you'll have your thermostat somewhere in your home. You'll call for heat, that'll turn on, it'll heat your radiators up and your home will get hot. When it reaches temperature, these things turn off, turn your gas boiler off, your radiators start to cool and your room starts to cool. When it drops to that thermostat's differential or hysteresis, and what that means is, is how much it allows the room to drop by before it heats up again, it'll then call for heat again. Your gas boiler will turn on, your radiators will heat up and it'll start to heat your room. And what happens is your gas boiler turns on, your room heats up, it turns off, it cools down, on, off, on, off. And that's why we call them on-off controls. It's an incredibly basic method of heating your home. If I liken it to the way you drive your car, if you drove your car like an on-off controller, you'd jump in it, you'd put your accelerator hard to the floor, you'd accelerate as fast as you could till you reach the speed limit and then you'd let your foot off the accelerator. When your speed decreased, you'd floor it again and go faster and slower and faster and slower. None of us drive our cars like that because it's inefficient. We steadily accelerate the car, reach the speed limit, back off with the throttle, but keep feathering in it and keep controlling that speed to manage its input. These are very basic on, off, on, off, and it makes your appliance, your gas boiler or heat pump inefficient. That's why we use weather compensation. So how does weather compensation differ from an on, off thermostat? Well, it all begins with the heat loss. When we design a heating system for a property, we decide how warm the property needs to be relevant to the outdoor conditions and that gives us how many kilowatts or watts of energy we need to put into the house to maintain that indoor temperature at the outdoor conditions. So if I use my fantastic artwork here to draw a house, normally in the UK, we have different design temperatures depending where the property is in the UK. But for this example, I'm gonna pick the parameters and I'm gonna choose an outdoor design temperature of minus five with an indoor design temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. So that's a worst case scenario, the temperature outside relevant to the indoor temperature. We will then work out the heat loss based on that. Now, if you imagine most of the time in the UK, we are not at this temperature. The ambient temperature is warmer. The average conditions in the UK are somewhere in the region of seven degrees Celsius in winter on average. So what that means is for most of the year, your heat emitters or radiators are too big for the house. They would put too much heat in relative to the outdoor conditions. So we manage that heat input by using devices that can modulate their output. So your heat pump or gas boiler can vary the amount of heat that it kicks out. But what it can't vary is the size of your radiators. So the way we control the output of them is by changing the flow temperature going into them. If we've designed our radiators with these parameters in mind, minus five outdoor, 21 degrees indoor, and we've decided on a flow temperature that will keep the property warm in those conditions, when it's warmer outside, we can turn the flow temperature down on the radiators and still achieve the indoor temperature. The knock-on effect of that 
is the heat pump or gas boiler becomes way more efficient. The lower the flow temperature in both situations, the more efficient they are on average. What we'll do now is use a little bit of maths to explain how we work out the weather compensation curve. So, hypothetically speaking, we've got our indoor design condition, outdoor de design temperature, and we will have done a heat loss calculation, separate video for that, to denote, to decide what the heat loss is on this property. So I'm gonna put a, a, a number on it. I am gonna say it's a 10 kilowatt heat loss. So the total heat loss, when it's 21 degrees inside, minus five outside is 10 kilowatts. So what we can do with that is we can work out how many watts heat loss we have per degree of temperature change from outdoor inside. So if we just slow it down a bit, the difference between the indoor temperature and outdoor temperature is 26 degrees in this situation. So we've lifted the temperature from minus five to 21, which is a 26 degree differential. And we needed 10 kilowatts to achieve that, or 10,000 watts. So what we can do is divide that wattage using my calculator to work out how many watts we need per degree rise. So if we take the 10,000 watts and divide it by the 26 degree differential, yeah? That will give us 384 watts per degree rise. So for every degree difference, we needed 384 watts. So now we're armed with this information, that gives us the ability to calculate the heat loss at any given outdoor condition. So just to cover that again, the original heat loss is 10 kilowatts when we have a 21 degree room temperature, it's a minus five degrees outdoor temperature. So we're lifting the temperature from minus five to 21, which is 26 degrees lift. We calculated the heat loss at 10 kilowatt, which is 10,000 watts. If we divide that wattage, by the differential between those two temperatures, that will give us our watts per degree rise. So just slow that down in your head, think about it until you understand that bit. Now we've got that information, we can calculate the heat loss at any given outdoor temperature. So let's get rid of that minus five and choose another outdoor temperature because it's not minus five in the UK all the time. Most of the time it's way warmer than that. Like we said earlier, average, seven degrees Celsius winter temperatures. Let's choose 10 degrees. So when it's 10 degrees outside, let's calculate what our heat loss will be. So the difference between that temperature and that temperature is 11 degrees. That's an 11 degree differential. To work out the heat loss, all we do is multiply that watts per degree by 11. Three, eight, four by 11. Our heat loss, at 10 degrees Celsius will be 4.224 kilowatts or 4,224 watts, okay? Not 10 kilowatts anymore, 4.2 kilowatts. So now you've absorbed that information, hopefully you're starting to understand that heat loss is variable depending on the outdoor conditions. The warmer it is outside, the lower the heat loss. The colder it is outside, the higher the heat loss. And our variation of heat input is based on the output of the heat generator, be it the heat pump or gas boiler, speeding up or slowing down, and the variance in delivery from the heat emitters is based on the flow temperature being delivered to them. So we need to vary that flow temperature according to this information. So how does the weather compensation controller interact with that information? Well, it's all based on what we call a heat curve. If I draw a graph here, and on one axis, I put the flow temperature going to your radiators or underfloor heating, and plot that on this side of the graph. So the range here is from 30 degrees to 55 degrees Celsius. So that's the flow temperature going to your radiators or your underfloor heating. On the other axis, we will put the outdoor temperature ranging from generally plus 17 degrees Celsius all the way down to 
minus 10. Now these numbers will vary depending on design considerations such as heat emitter size, area design temperature, but this is just to give you a visual indication of how the controller, the weather compensation controller, is interacting with the information. Now, on this graph, I'm gonna plot a curve, which is what we call a weather compensation curve. And what the controller is doing, it's looking at this information here, the outdoor temperature. So obviously it's ranging here from minus 10 to plus 17 degrees Celsius. And if we take our design temperature, which was minus five and put it there, and imagine we've got all the other temperatures in the range plotted in between. And then we've got our flow temperature there. What the heat pump will do, or gas boiler, will look at the outdoor temperature. And if we chose that design temperature, it would draw a line up and across, and that would give it its flow temperature for that given design temperature. Okay, so as you imagine, as we're getting warmer, the flow temperature will be lower. Warmer still, flow temperature cooler. Okay, so the warmer it is outside, the cooler the flow temperature. The colder it is outside, the hotter the flow temperature. So when it's really cold outside, your radiators will feel hot, and when it's warmer outside, they'll feel cooler. But think back to that heat loss calculation and that degrees and watts per degree rise. The warmer it is outside, the less heat we need. So we can lower the flow temp, lower the heat flow into the house, and the cooler it gets outside, we can raise the flow temp and increase the watts going into the house. So it's worth you guys, be it a homeowner or an installer, just working your way back through the information I've told you, just to absorb it so you truly understand weather compensation. Now the beauty of this is, is it means that because on average in the UK, the, wi the winter weather is warmer than the design conditions, for the majority of the year, we're running at these low flow temperatures. And with a heat pump and a gas boiler, the lower the flow temp, the more efficient it is. So for vast swathes of the year, we're down here. It's only rare conditions, one week of the year, two weeks of the year, that we're having to run at these higher flow temperatures. So we can make that efficiency of the heat pump much better. I hope that makes sense. Um, just a side note to it, there is varying levels of weather compensation inbuilt into controllers. Some have auto adapt curves, some use AI, some use weather prediction to adjust this curve to make it more accurate. But that's another story for another day.